the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless and thank you for this day. We thank you especially for this special season of the Holy Spirit, wherein we invoke the power of the Holy Spirit on all of us gathered, especially in these days. Help us to walk this journey with the Holy Spirit, so that every one of us is enlightened and we are motivated to reach out to the others through the same Spirit. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, it's the Pentecost season, season of the Holy Spirit. You know the word Pentecost is connected with the harvest feast, the feast of reaping what we have sown. And in that sense, it's a joyous occasion for all of us to think and to pray to the Holy Spirit. You know, it's a wonderful experience to have the Holy Spirit accompanying us in this journey of 30 days as we will be explaining to you what are the requisites by which the Holy Spirit comes to us the fruits, the gifts, the charisms of the Holy Spirit and more than anything else, what the scriptures say about the Holy Spirit. Perhaps we are in the season of the shining sun. The Holy Spirit is like the shining sun. I am sure you have heard of the solar power. It's one of the cheapest most effective and easily available. But many a times we know that we don't use this solar power which is so much part of us. It seems there were these two, two persons who went on a tour to what's called the Niagara Falls in between Canada and the Americas. And one of them said, looking at the falls, Niagara Falls, he said, what a waste. And see how much unused power of the water you just wasted away. And the other person who was a man of the spirit, as it were, said, perhaps not this alone. There is a bigger waste and what is wasted is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's very true, my dear brothers. And sisters, we know that the Holy Spirit is available for us at the same time. We don't make use of the power, the gifts, the, the effects of the Holy Spirit in our life. And that is why the Bangalore Renewal and Charismatic Group, what we call the BCCRS, Bangalore, Catholic, Charismatic and Renewal Services that are working in our Archdiocese along with the proclamation and also the Evangelization Commission together will embark on a journey of 30 days explaining to us the wealth of the Holy Spirit, the depth of the Holy Spirit each day Every day, beginning from today, we will be having these reflections by persons who have been endowed with the Holy Spirit and surely they would enjoy speaking to you and giving you these explanations which will be useful for your life. Let me just give you a, gift, a gist of what is coming in these next 30 days. First of all, Holy Spirit doesn't come from just from the thin air. The basis of Holy Spirit in our understanding is the Holy Scriptures. The Old Testament, the very first sentence of the Old Testament, the first sentence of the book of Genesis says, In the beginning God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, 
and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, meaning to say our scriptures begin with the Holy Spirit. And from there onwards, we see the action, we see the involvement of the Holy Spirit in everything. Ultimately, we say the Holy Scriptures itself are inspired and written with the help of the Holy Spirit. So, my dear friends, the Bible is not only a course of events, a course of history that just runs through, but it's about the persons and personalities who have been empowered with the Holy Spirit and they are the ones, as it were, who come forcefully at every stage in every chapter of the Bible. You start from Abraham, you speak of Isaac, you speak of Jacob, you speak of Moses, the, the judges after him, the kings, the prophets, and all of them point towards Jesus, the Messiah, who is to come. Let me just quote one sentence from Prophet Isaiah. Behold, I make all things new. Chapter Isaiah chapter 43. And this is how perhaps the Old Testament prepares us for the coming of the Messiah through the power of the Holy Spirit. The New Testament, my dear brothers and sisters, begins with the history of salvation of Jesus' entry into our history. And the sentence, or rather, the, the proclamation, the announcement that was made to Mother Mary is very important. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadows. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And that is how Mary is empowered with the Holy Spirit and she has all her difficulties or doubts are cleared by the angel because you will be the mother of God to the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is how Jesus is born, Jesus grows and at every stage we see the action of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus. Even when he is tempted, you know this beautiful sentence that we have when he is going to the desert. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring the good news to the afflicted. Chapter 4, verse 18 of Luke. As soon as Jesus has come out of the temptations, he is empowered with the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus was guided by the Holy Spirit every stage of his life. And as he goes about teaching, working miracles and raising the dead, and so many other wonders that he makes, and so many other lives that he touches, every one of them is touched with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when he comes to the time of his suffering and death, and death which is considered a defeat as it were, but his resurrection is once again the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus rises again with the power of the Holy Spirit. And before his resurrection, he promises the disciples, I will not leave you orphans. I shall send a paraclete and he will be the consoler. He will be the one who teaches and continues what I have been saying to you. And this is how the church is prepared. The scriptures prepare the coming of the Holy Spirit in a very powerful way. And that is called the Pentecost, the 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus, which is a powerful event in the history of of the whole mankind and that is the day we say the church was born and the church is inaugurated with the Holy Spirit and you know the disciples who were at one time were so much scared so much afraid and covered up in this corona season we see that we ourselves are covered up and the disciples too but the event of the Pentecost not only makes them fearless they are not afraid to go and proclaim Jesus and Jesus in a perfect manner because they are filled with the Holy Spirit. So, my dear brothers, you have to remember that the Holy Spirit is the basis of our scripture, basis of the word of God. And all the scripture was written with the foreknowledge and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the word of God is very powerful. The word of God that has been proclaimed to us is the word of the Holy Spirit. And in that sense, the 
Gospel of John chapter 6 verse 63 says the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life the words are full of spirit and they are full of life because the words of the scriptures are the words which give us life and life to the fullest jesus tells us in the gospel of john chapter 10 verse 10 i have come to give life and life in its fullness and this life is found in our scriptures and this is the power of the and the working of the holy spirit among us and these words of the holy spirit are very important and these words of the scripture that is basically for us the words of the holy spirit as it were should surely touch us perhaps you have got many occasions when the word of god stirred in your heart i must say that in my own personal life i was also perhaps i used to read bible i used to read the scripture but then it just didn't enter my life i was becoming a priest and i remember that i went into a big crisis when i was just in my last year of my studies to become a priest it's called the diaconate the one stage just before ordination i was getting ready for it and it so happened that i had the biggest doubt of my life that i should continue as a priest and continue to get ordained also as a priest and the reason was because my father who was a teacher was just retiring he retired in the month of february and in the month of march was supposed to be my diaconate when i went to my spiritual director and he asked me to do a personal retreat i remember the priest father lavet by name a jesuit a very holy priest you know we, we were a group of us and he led us into a real spiritual reflection that touched all of us i would say the spirit touched all of us and the scripture was that time was the gospel of luke verse chapter 24 verse 13 to 45 what we call the emmaus event jesus walking on the road to emmaus and as he walks he is walking with the disciples but the disciples do not recognize him and jesus pretends as if he goes another way but then they tell him his words which touched me was stay with us lord because it is evening i think i was also at that time a little in a shadow in the evening of my life everything was dark everything was doubtful but then these words gave me a lot of courage a lot of strength as it were that the lord is with me and the lord will walk with me and you know that particular passage ends with a sentence that did not our hearts burn i'm sure your hearts also burn when you hear certain scripture and scriptural moments like it happened to me and so what i would like to say is the word of god the word of the scriptures is full of the spirit and it surely touches us at some moment and that is what we ask for the acts of the apostles my dear brothers and sisters we have to say that it has not only the scriptures that are explained to us but also prepare us for the sacraments the scriptures also speak to us about the gifts of the holy spirit the works of the holy spirit the fruits of the holy spirit and the charisms of the church and all this we get in the acts of the apostles and the letters of the apostles and the disciples and each of these letters is full of life full of support for us in our spiritual life finally my dear brothers and sisters i must say the scriptures and the spirit that goes along with it is a hope and a hopeful life for us the scriptures give us the future for our life and it's very important for us to say that the scriptures not only give us for our mind but also for our heart the holy spirit teaches us to pray st paul in the letter to the romans chapter 8 says the the spirit teaches us to pray and to address god as abba father and that is important you know the you cat the book that of catechesis for the youth has got a small sentence which was very important for me anyone who enters into a relationship with the holy spirit can experience miracles even today 
we can experience miracles even today st augustine speaking about the holy spirit is to say he is the guest of our soul he is the guest of our soul what better guest can we expect you know the famous author thomas merton in his book no man is an island says the holy spirit is the most perfect gift of the father and yet he is the one gift which the father gives most easily and if it's so easy for us to have the spirit with us and to journey with us why don't we walk this journey this pilgrimage so my dear brothers and sisters i invite you to be with us in this journey of the holy spirit for these next 30 days when these are brothers of the bccrs of the ashtai so bangalore will try to explain to you the in depth the the resources and what the spirit means for each one of us i would request you to join us every day in the evening as we pray with the holy spirit as we meditate and as we try to walk our way with the holy spirit thank you god bless you